going on guys welcome back to another episode of rusto mod in the last episode you saw us chop off all the body mounts on our 1950 willy's wagon frame and we attached them onto the new 2000s jeep wrangler frame that we're putting underneath of this project now we welded all that stuff in place and we got the body situated onto the frame so we could get ready to install our tdi engine in the last episode, you also saw us do some modifications to our transfer case to make the TDI engine fit a little bit better. So now we need to figure out how we're going to mount our TDI engine into our frame. Now, like I said in the previous episode, this swap is actually pretty common and they do make motor mounts for this application. But in our instance, since our motor is a little bit older and has a mechanical injection pump, some of the bolt holes for the motor mounts don't line up with the kit that they sell. So we're stuck with having to make our own motor mounts, which isn't a big deal. We can definitely handle that. So now that we got the motor situated in the frame, we actually had to pack up and leave for LS Fest. Now that we're back, we can begin by putting this motor back into place and seeing where everything has to line up to start making some motor mounts for this thing. All right, well now we're back on the Jeep project. We've had quite a bit of break because we had LS Fest and had to get all the rest of the cars done in between so now we're back on trying to get this motor installed to this jeep so we water jetted a plate out so we could try to make some motor mounts for this so we just got the motor back down and going to try to see what we have to do to make motor mounts to fit into the jeep frame so that's what we're working on so what we're going to do is this side of the motor has like next to nothing to bolt to and then you got this other AC compressor in theory that goes here. So you literally have no way to mount anything to it. You only got a couple holes possibly like this breather here. Not that I would necessarily want to go to that. So anyway, what we're going to do, the way this was mounted in the Volkswagen, so they had a motor mount off this corner of the motor here. And then they had this. And then you can see this motor mount here. So they had an opposite corner. So that's what we're going to look at. So what we did here is made a mock-up plate that we got a series of holes in here. We're going to pick up the two existing bell housing bolts. Those are 3816. We've got a locating dowel uh, that lines up there. Then we added another hole down here that we'll drill and tap lower. We just put a series of holes spaced whatever half inch apart. We'll figure out which one looks the best. We'll drill and tap that. So this is just a mock-up plate so we can get some measurements to the frame once it's in there. So then we can design the actual mount. But uh, these holes aren't completely tapped all the way through. They, they start, but they stop. So we're going to run a tap through there, open those up, and then that'll be the beginning of the motor mount on that side. All right, we got this thing lifted in the air, and so we can put our motor in here. I don't know if I put too much detail in last time we left off, but the Jeep motor mounts originally mounted in these two spots here. We ground those down so we could have a little bit more clearance for the motor to sit in there. So now we should be able to set it within our frame rails. The issue is with this motor, since it's from a front wheel drive car, a lot of the accessories and everything are off the front of the motor this way. And that just takes up a ton of room on the one side of the motor when the other side has nothing on it. So now with our air conditioning compressor on it, you can see how much it sticks out even from where we're gonna put our motor mount. So it's just really tight on this side. So that's what we're gonna have to figure out. Go down. I'm trying to line this transmission mount up. <laughs> So now you can see how close the air conditioning compressor is to that suspension arm. 
It's not even really down here. Yeah, and it's already hitting. And how far back the motor is is crazy. All right, so now our dilemma is we think it actually might be really close to that arm here, but that now we have the transmission side tied down and the motor set back a little bit like it should be in the car. And uh, the arm for the front suspension is really close to that. So we wanna see what the front suspension would be like traveling up and down. So we're going to pull the springs out and then lower this front suspension with the jack to see the angle of that because it definitely looks like it'll hit and this frame doesn't have any weight on it also with the body so it's going to set a little bit lower so this gap might close for sure so now we're going to try that out all right so now you can see we took the springs out and then jacked the driver's side tire up and the suspension arm is hitting our compressor there so but it's hitting it before we come to the bump stop so that's our issue all right you can see it a little better where our suspension is hitting the air conditioning compressor there all right so we took the air conditioning compressor out i don't think that that's gonna work and then jacked it up so you can see where it was, but even so, see how close the diff is to... Well, we centered it back up because we had a way off. Yeah, so we pushed the motor to the passenger side to help with the air conditioning compressor. So we moved the motor back and then got it pretty straight. So took that out and you can see the clearance is much better. It's still close, uh, but we're right on the bump stop, compressed, compressing the bump stop. So that's where it would be if it, we were up on like a rock or whatever. So here you can see how, how we have the tire jacked up, which isn't doesn't seem like it's that much. So. Well, it's a stock. It's but this, yeah, I was gonna say, this is stock springs and everything. So we were thinking of going to probably have to put lift springs in it so we can clear once this body is on it, it's gonna add a bunch more weight so we would, it, would, it would still be higher, but that would be it at full compression. All right, so now we're getting this thing where it should be. We have the angle of the motor back a little bit, and then we have the transfer case marked where we had it on the last time so that's pretty much where it's gonna live hopefully so that looks a lot better clearance wise plenty of room and we're right on the bump stop full compression so we got we got plenty of room for the engine so we're worried about the oil filter being able to get at that but looks like we should underneath we should be able to get it perfect so that we're good it looks a lot better than it did with the air conditioning compressor in there. Yeah, and these are the same motor mounts that we used on the Rambler. I just like them because they isolate and you can get to them from the bottom. Well, they also said they were a hydraulic mount, which yeah, they're full of fluid. pops up whenever you type in hydraulic at the motor mount into uh, the internet. But uh, so anyway. Yeah, so we'll make a plate, I guess, to go on the bottom and then something looks like bridge it. Yep. Pretty much that on that side and then bridge it to the motor and that should be done on the other side is going to be on the front. So here's the passenger side, plenty of room on this side. And then this is where we're going to make our motor mount from, which it made, it was originally was on the there from mount. the stock yeah. set up on the front wheel drive car. So it'd be something like that. And uh, this is our other issue with coming up and hitting that. So we we'll have to raise it up or figure that passenger side articulation out. Now we just want to get this thing just tacked roughly into place so we can take the forklift off and lower the body down. So we got this piece of scrap, which is the perfect piece because we're going to mount it there and it's literally all jagged cut, but it's cut perfectly already has a hole in it. So we're going to weld it there, bolt it there and that side will be done. And then on the 
driver's side. We have that plate here, so we'll just make a piece of steel go from from there like that. Yep, that'll be easy. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna tack this plate here to the plate that we have on the motor. We got it centered in the center, and then we got the angle back, so, and it's correct back here, so now we're going to finish tacking that into place so this thing doesn't move. All right, got that thing tacked in, so hopefully they hold. See, we're gonna drop this thing down now. All right, ready? Ready? Yep. Solid. All right, so now the motor is in. We got the springs back in, but it's in so we can put the body on it without jacks. And, and then we can make it for the actual mounts. Yeah, and then we can make some real motor mounts off of the front, like we were saying before. So hopefully those mounts that we just made don't interfere with the body. All right, so now I gotta trim these mounts on either side to be able to fit our Jeep body because the mounts are, and the motor are really close to where the motor mount here is. So we're gonna trim these up. There's our engine in there. Yeah. Really small. So you pop the hood on this thing and you could stand in there. Look how much room you have in front of the motor. It's crazy. All right guys, so now that we have the motor positioned into place, we ended up drawing up kind of a rough idea of the motor's dimensions and our Jeep Wrangler frame rail's dimensions and trying to figure out how we're gonna do some motor mounts on this thing. Like we're saying, we're going to try to retain some of the Volkswagen motor mount locations so that way it's exactly where it was whenever it was mounted into the front wheel drive Volkswagen Jetta or Prasad or whatever this thing came in. So this is our front motor mount design that we're kind of thinking of and this is our rear motor mount design that we're thinking of. So this one's going to bolt to the bell housing and the front one is going to bolt to the mount on the front of the engine where the original mount was. So the one on the back with the bell housing, we actually ended up reusing some mounts that were body mounts on of our C10 project, and it was off the Escalade. So we just chopped those off, and we're gonna reuse them here for motor mounts for our TDI engine. So that's our idea with the rear motor mounts, and we have our transmission mount here. So this is basically just adapting the Jeep Wrangler transmission mount to the new 700R4 transmission that we're using in this application. So we're gonna have to make all of these mounts and figure out where they're gonna go onto our Jeep, but you'll have to see that on the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to help support the channel so we can do more awesome builds like this. We post Willie's content every Friday, so make sure you stay tuned for the next video on that, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.